Hello, my name is Diamond, aka Lady Leo. Welcome to my channel or welcome back if you are a brand new viewer. So I've been having a lot of fun reacting to Reddit stories, Am I the Assholes? And I have a few more that I'm doing today and then I think I will probably double back to the wedding category since it's been a minute since I looked at that category. But let's just get started with our first story. All right, am I the asshole for breaking up with my girlfriend because she dressed like a slut? I, 21 year old male, recently broke up with my girlfriend, 22 year old female of five years. We've been having some issues lately, mainly revolving around her clothing choices and social plans. She's been dressing a lot more pro provocatively than she used to, wearing outfits that are super revealing when we go out. I tried to express how uncomfortable it made me, but she said she wasn't dressing for anyone else but herself and that she, sh she should be able to wear whatever she wants. Yes, yes, she should be. The breaking point came when she and her friends started planning a girl's trip to Miami. I'm not naive. I know what goes down in Miami during these kinds of trips. Wow, way to say that you have no trust in your girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, um, especially with how her friends are, they're all single and like to party. Doesn't mean anything. The person loyal to you is your girlfriend. I told her I wasn't comfortable with her going, especially with how she's been dressing lately, and asked if she could at least change her outfits a bit or reconsider the trip. She refused and said I was being controlling. You are. I could, couldn't take it anymore and told her that if she doesn't respect my boundaries, then we are done. She got mad, said I was insecure and accused me of trying to control her. I broke up with her on the spot but because I, I, I feel like she wasn't respecting me. Now her friends are blasting me online, calling me controlling and misogynistic. Even some of our mutual friends are saying I overreacted and I should have trusted her. But in my mind, I feel like I've justified because I've been, I was just asking for some respect and compromise. Are you the asshole? Okay couple of things. You guys are both very young. You've been dating f for five years, which means you've been dating since you were in high school. I would be curious to know, because you said that you've been having some issues lately uh, revolving around her clothing choice. She's been dressing more provocatively than she used to. I guess I would kind of need to understand what that means, right? Like, was she wearing similar things and now it's just like i don't know let's say she's wearing like short shorts and now the shorts are like all the way to the to butt crack you know what i mean so um yeah and not only that she's young she's 22 you're 21 you're both very young in your 20s i think is like the time where you most start to understand yourself and what you like and what you don't like and it's when you try to experiment with things and clothes I do think that for whatever reason, there is some insecurity that's been forming, right? Because you've been dating for five years, but you said that this is, she just started dressing more provocatively and that part of it does somehow, it seems like it's opening insecurity in you and because of that, you don't trust her. And yes, I don't think you're right to sort of ask her to change how she dresses, right? Because... I have a feeling that she probably was dressing similar to this. Maybe it's just like the first time you noticed it. I don't know. Um, and then she went to Miami with her friends and you're already assuming that she's going to do something like you don't seem to have any faith in her. Regardless of her friends, she's the one who's in a relationship with you. And if you trust her, then there shouldn't really be any issues. So for me, yeah, I... I Respect is one thing, but you weren't really asking for respect, right? Like you're asking her to change the way she dresses so that you feel better about it, right? How is that respect? Respect would be like, don't talk to your ex or something like that. And you assumed that her going on this trip, meaning that she was going to cheat on you. So yeah, I'm going to red flag. You are the asshole. Okay. So yeah, I think you're the asshole. All right, am I wrong for not telling my friend I slept with her boyfriend? Whoa, <laughs> okay. So about four years ago, I met a 29 year old female. So I, a 29 year old female, met a guy on a dating app after moving to a new city. We went on a couple dates and got along fine, but after sleeping together, we lost contact. It was a very mutual, just not feeling it situation for both of us. And there were absolutely no hurt feelings on, other, on either side. Six months later, I met the love of my life at my new job. 
I am now happily married to my husband, 32 year old male. We've been together for three years, married for one. Here's the plot twist. My now husband and I both transfer to a new office where we now work with a guy from a few years ago. I had immediately told my husband what happened because I didn't want him to find out somehow and think I lied to him and he wasn't upset or anything. Good on you. You seem to have a very good relationship and dynamic with your husband. Um, at work events, we got along well and even all became friends. Dating app guy also would bring his girlfriend of about two years to work parties. And at first I kind of avoided talking to them to be respectful in case she knew and wasn't comfortable with me being around her boyfriend. Lately, we've been talking more and found out we have similar taste in movies and books and the same sense of humor. We started having girls nights and hanging out more and now I consider her a very good friend. Okay, um, the only problem is I don't think she knows about what happened between her and her boyfriend between her and her boyfriend so, between her boyfriend and I before they met and I feel extremely guilty I feel like it's not my place to tell her and I also don't think it really matters because I'm happily married they're happily together and it happened years ago but I can't help feeling that if the roles were reversed and I somehow got found out I would be incredibly hurt so I wrong from not saying anything so there's an edit before I go into the edit let me just kind of say my thoughts I do think this one's a little bit of a tricky situation I understand both sides of it, right? Like she wasn't, it wasn't like a situation where she was your friend initially and um, you had this situation happen and she just happened to start dating this person. So you, you just happened to have a situation ship or it's not really a one night stand, right? But you had a sort of, you know, you had some intimate reactions with this person and then you lost contact and then you got married, you guys started working together and him and his girlfriend, you guys get along really well. I think for me, um, I probably would have a conversation with the dating app guy and just say, hey, I'm feeling kind of uncomfortable because your girlfriend and I, we get along really well. I think we're really good friends. I don't want this to come up in a situation later on down the line, but I also don't want to be the one to tell her because I don't want her to think that like, I still like you or et cetera. So I feel like maybe if you had a conversation with dating app guy about him talking to her, maybe that might be something because I, I totally understand you not wanting to say anything, but I do think that if you don't say anything, she'll probably find out from someone else. And would that be the best thing for somebody that you're developing a friendship with? Probably not. So if it was me, I would talk to dating app guy and say, hey, have you let her know about us in the past? I just don't want there to be any issues. Just to clarify, I'm happy, you're happy, but I don't, I just, you know, like I want her to know. So yeah, have you thought about doing something like that? All right, there's an edit. So moving on to the edit. Okay, edit. Thanks for everyone's input. LOL, definitely wasn't expecting this many people to have an opinion. I agree with most of you, so does my husband, but it's not my place to tell her if she doesn't already know. It's her boyfriend's. Honestly, I had no intention of getting super close to her, but it just kind of happened due to us hanging out in the same female friend groups and getting along super well. We're definitely not best friends, but I like hanging out with her and not going to end the friendship because of something that happened years ago or make things weird by randomly bringing it up to her. Yeah, that's fair. Also, it's not like we're hanging out every day. We just have movie wine nights every week with other, with a cup, with, with a couple of other friends. If she asked me about it, I'd be honest, but I have no intention of bringing it up to her at the end of the day. It really doesn't matter to any of the parties involved and we're all happy and secure relationships. Realistically, the worst case scenario is if she finds out as an upset and no longer wants to hang out with me. I would totally understand and respect that. I don't think it's a huge betrayal though, and I highly doubt it would affect her relationship with her boyfriend because they have a stable, healthy, stable relationship. Um, Appreciate hearing other one's perspective though. And this has been an interesting experiment. Yeah, so that's my thoughts. I don't think it's your place to tell her, but I feel like if it was me, I would probably just say to dating app guy, like, what do you think? Should you tell her? Like, do you want to tell her? Especially if you end up becoming closer friends later. It sounds like you're kind of like work friends, if that makes sense. Like I've had situations with people who I work with and we just become close outside of work. And then if that person moves away or loses the job or whatever, we're just not close anymore. So they're not lifelong friends. So I could also get not wanting to rock the boat because, you know, you don't you're not with him and you're not interested in him. So, yeah, I see both sides of it and I would stay out of it. I, I wouldn't tell her 
Um, but I would also just say, hey, maybe you should say something to her dating app guy. <laughs> All right, moving on to the next story. Married for 10 years, wife was previously married and received a sizable divorce settlement enough to buy, oops, I forgot to read the title. All right, so my wife, my 38 male, sorry, I, I don't know why I read these weird. So I'm a 38 year old male, my wife is 40 year old female, is my landlord, what would you do? How does that work out? Because you're still married. Hmm. Okay. Anyway, married for 10 years, wife was previously married and received a sizable divorce settlement enough to buy a small house before we met, which is our current home. So when I met her, part of the attraction is that she was financially stable and independent. Right now, I essentially pay her to live in our home, which is intended to cover the HOA tax insurance fair IMO, oh, IMO, I don't know what that means, but also a bit extra. The point of contention comes out of out to a small 10% discount to the comparable values in the area. Edit example, the actual amount is higher. So I pay her $3,000 a month, HOA, tax, insurance, 2,500. So she's taking $500 as income. Comparable rent in the area might be 33,000. 3, Sorry, you're married, right? So you're married for 10 years. Your wife was pre previously married. Why, why is this a situation when you're, why, when she's your landlord, when you've lived, I'm assuming you live in the same house. This is weird. Her reasoning is that she didn't own the property. I'd be paying the full rent elsewhere. She could rent the property to someone else to make that income and we'd have to live somewhere else. Other than that, she doesn't work and doesn't contribute financially. We have kids, she's a good mom, but she makes me feel bad for always being broke. Problem isn't that in the last five years, the rent basically doubled. The property value exploded since the pandemic. I honestly can't afford to live here anymore. Her financial net worth is better than ever while I have nothing. She won't compromise on her lifestyle to improve our situation. So I'm wondering, is this normal? What would you do? Okay, sorry, let me just... Let me read this again because I feel like I'm missing something. You are currently married. The two of you are married. You have children. Your wife was previously married. She got a divorce settlement, which was enough to buy a house, which is the house that you live in together. Um, you said part of the attraction when you met her was that she was financially stable, but she doesn't work. So her stability comes from her divorce settlement. Okay. Um, so you pay her to live in the house that you live in together? This is very weird. Because <laughs> at first I thought you guys were divorced, but you're not, you're married and you live in this house together. She doesn't work. The only way she makes money is by collecting it from you as a landlord, even though she also lives in the house. I don't understand this at all. And you said that the property value has gone up and you, you can't afford to live here. You said her financial net worth is better. How is it better? You're paying her, you're paying her $3,000 a month. So she's taking $500 as income better than ever. Is this, are you trolling? <laughs> is this real? I don't know if this is real or not. Or maybe I just feel like there's a lot of information missing out of this. I'm thinking to myself, this dynamic is strange. I've never heard of a couple that is married living in the same house where one person is paying rent to someone even though they live there too right it's not like a situation where you're not married and she's the landlord you live there and she doesn't she lives here too and she doesn't have a job this is just really weird to me it doesn't seem normal at all i mean also what do you do for a living like if the if you make if you're paying her three thousand dollars a month you i'm assuming you must make at least five to six i mean you have to you have kids and you have to live off of it this is just a weird situation situation if this is true i don't know what you guys are doing but it just sounds strange and you haven't told me a good reason why your wife can't work i mean she's 40 years old unless you've got kids that are really young and like daycare would negate her having a job i'm not understanding why she can't work uh she's not close to retirement so i don't know <laughs> sounds really weird to me buddy moving on to the next story <laughs> that's just a really weird one all right so some more relationship advice 
I'm 29 year old female. My husband is a 27 year old male. He says he can't connect with our daughter because he wasn't present at the birth. What do I do? I had my daughter five months ago. My husband has been distant with our daughter. He doesn't help me with anything related to our daughter. He confessed to me that it's because he doesn't feel that the father daughter connection since he wasn't present at her birth. I want to clarify we are not from the United States. Here, there is free medical service and we had the option to choose to have our baby in a public hospital or have her in a private hospital. We did have the money to pay for a private hospital, but my husband said it would be better for me to give birth in the public hospital to save some money and use it for other things. Well, in the public hospital, they don't allow, any, allow anyone to accompany you. You literally go in alone not from the US. So I know I said you said I know you said you're not from the US. So does that mean you don't live in the US? I'm assuming that's what you mean. Um, my birth was really horribly painful, adding that there were seven other women about to give birth in that room. Ooh, wow. Okay. There are also several other medical students who made them do the who made them do the delay exam. It wasn't a good experience for me. And now my husband comes up with this nonsense. I don't know what else to do. It's really exhausting having to deal with the baby all day, having to keep the house clean, the food cooked. Um Sorry, let me just make sure that was the, I don't think there was another part of that. Yeah, um, this, okay. I'm a firm believer that if you're going to have children, you need to have a conversation about what the reality of having children looks like. You know, do you have the same values? What does the distribution of like chores look like, right? I don't know, you said you're not from the US, so I don't know what country you're from and like what the cultural standard is for men as it relates to to um, children. But what I can tell you in the US is that men are conditioned to be providers and that they don't have to take care of children. Like changing diapers, that's women's work. All the things having to do with children are women's work. I'm not saying everybody is like that. I'm just saying for a long time, that's what society has set the standard for in terms of men. So if your country is similar to that, I think it's important that you have a conversation about that before you have children, because it's very hard to kind of backtrack. I don't really understand this argument that him not being present for the birth doesn't really do anything. To me, that doesn't make sense because you're still with your child all the time. So like watching her be born is only one aspect of her life and you see your child every day. So I think the reality is she's just not connected to your child. And honestly, there is nothing you can do. And this is why it's important to really have really deep conversations about having children, because I think there's a lot of people who, who have this fantasy about having children or like they think they should have children because it's what society has told them. But the reality of having children is that it's a lot of work. And if that's not something you're interested in, that's fine. But like have that conversation before you have children. So in this case, I mean, you can't make him be more interested in the child. That's really something he has to form on his own. I don't understand his argument that he's not connected to her because he wasn't there for the birth. I just don't think he's connected in general. And again, that could be a societal thing. It could be that in your society, men are raised to just specifically be providers and that they don't have to interact with children. So like it could also be variable based on his own experiences with his parents as a child and his father, you know what I mean? Like if, if his mother was the one that was taking care of him all the time and he it didn't interact with his father and he didn't have a connection with his father, that could kind of explain as well. He may not understand how do I connect to my child when I never had an example of it. I don't know if you have, um, if there's like therapy that you can seek out in your country, but you might want to try some couples therapy that might be helpful. You could do individual therapy, but I think in your case, like couples therapy might be helpful to you. But yeah, I would definitely, definitely think about some couples therapy. Um, and then for anybody who wants to have children going forward, I just, like I said, I think it's really important to have a genuine conversation with your partner about all the fallacies of having children because I think a lot of times what happens is people get pregnant and then they just have the child but it's a lot harder to get your shit together when the child is here it's a lot easier to do it ahead of time and then if you have different values you can work those out or maybe you just decide this person is not the right person for you because they're not going to be feasible for raising children so at this point you have kind of limited options because like I said you can't change his 
not connecting with your child. That's not something that you can do for him. It has to be something he wants to do. So if he wants to be more connected to your child, he has to want to pursue those things. I think some therapy might be helpful. I think it might be helpful too to understand like, do you guys have a good relationships in terms of like communication? Or is there always been this situation where you're like you're responsible for the household things and now it's just compounded because you have a child. So yeah, I'm sorry about that. I know it's a lot to have a child and then to have to take care of everything else on top of that too. But that's why it's, you know, communication is key. So might want to have a conversation with your husband if that's something you can do. If not, some therapy could be helpful. All right. Next one. I think this will be the last one I do in this batch. Yeah, this will be the last one. All right. How can I, 30-year-old female, confront my partner, 30-year-old male who... I think is cheating right this second without the huge fight. It's an interesting question. I don't I don't know if you can. Let's see. Hi, I know how pathetic this is all going to sound, but please be kind. I don't think it's pathetic to to ask for advice. Um, so I, 30 year old female, suspect my fiance, 30 year old male has been unfaithful. No concrete proof, but lots of instances of small lies to bumble authentication codes in his phone and now I've just found a transaction to an adult shop he's made while working away from home. It's late evening where we are. His phone is off and he's told me he's at work, pub, and adult shop transactions say otherwise. I didn't want to jump to conclusions or confront him without concrete proof or evidence, but I don't think my heart can take it anymore. I've texted him to say he needs to come home and we need to talk tomorrow. I have a toddler who will be looked after tomorrow so we can have this conversation. Now to my question. He is reactive, flies off the handle, super defensive, aggressive, very, very reactive in fights. He will go on the attack and I know he is going to blow his lid about me looking through his phone when I found Bumble messages and looking at his account, finding the transactions from tonight. Please, how can I approach this conversation to get answers without this blow up? I mean, I, th I think to a certain extent, you already know the answer to that question. Um, yeah, I mean, you know wh how, what type of person he is and that he has a very short fuse. So realistically, therapy, is he open to that? All right, let me read the second part. Even anyways, I can explain what drives someone to snoop in the first place. Besides a suspicion and a gut feeling, I'm not prepared for this conversation and we've been together for more than a decade, but unfortunately it hasn't been a happy decade. I want to stay together for our daughter, but infidelity is one step too far. We're also currently actively trying for another baby and recently last month had a miscarriage. I can't keep doing this. In our thirties, been together more than 10 years, mortgage child, the works. Okay, first off, I am so sorry that you just had a miscarriage. I'm sure that is incredibly emotional, very traumatic. I, um, you said you've been together with him for a decade and it hasn't been a happy decade. And considering you told me, well, you told the internet how explosive he is, I would venture to say, why do you want to have another child with him? I mean, I'm kind of surprised that you had a child with him to begin with. And if I were you, if you don't already, therapy. Therapy for yourself. If he's open to it, maybe some, some couples therapy. But I, I think the cheating is like one aspect of your relationship, but it seems like you probably have some other aspects that also aren't working out. Um, so to me, I think if you know he's going to be incredibly reactive to this, which could turn violent maybe i would say like i said if you're not already i would think some therapy for yourself would be really good i understand you have a child and you want to stay for your child i just don't think this ever ends up working out you know if anything it just subjects you to more abuse and your child as well like you have to think what's best for your child to grow up in this situation where you are not happy and you don't trust their father or is it better for them to grow up separately from their parents and you you have that stability for yourself as well so i just don't agree with like staying for the child but that is somebody telling you from the perspective who doesn't have children so i could feel differently if i was in your scenario yeah if you already know what his reaction will be to this and you already suspect that his he's cheating our gut feelings do usually tend to be right so I would say 
you probably already know in your heart that he's cheating. You just want the confirmation from him. Is he the type of person who's really going to give you that? Or is he going to gaslight you? Sorry. Or is he going to gaslight you into feeling bad for doing X, Y, and Z, even though he's the one that's cheating? So I firmly think that I really would love for you to do some therapy on your own to sort of process. You've been in this relationship for 10 years and it's, it can be really hard to see how toxic your relationship is when you're in it and very hard to step away, even more so in your case because you're married and you have a child and you're trying for a second child. But I think that him cheating is like, like the tip of the iceberg in terms of like the issues this this is just like the thing you're asking about but like i i feel like you're asking a broader question which is should you stay in this relationship and i know you have a lot of things going on it's very difficult to decouple your life i'm just saying is this going to be the best thing for you for your child to stay in this kind of dynamic do you want to bring a second child into this so i think there's a lot of complexities going on right here and i think the best thing that I would do if I were you is I would definitely seek out some therapy because it can therapy is really helpful and it's really helpful to process those things and those emotions with with someone else who's not in it and I don't mean your family and friends typically your family is usually going to be on your side and most of the time they're going to tell you what you want to hear not all not always sometimes you'll have family members that can be very objective but most of the time they're going to be on your side so yeah that would be my advice for you going forward all right those are going to be all the ones i'm going to do for this round like comment subscribe that's my time catch you later bye